Welcome, Instagram. Happy full super pink moon. It's uh, may not show up pink today, but it is a super moon. It's going to be larger uh, than than normal. I think it's like by 70% or something. It's crazy. Uh, so I've got a special guest on right now. Uh, his name is Mr. D uh, and he's from Texas. So I want you guys to, you know, give a warm welcome. This is his first time doing a live like this. I'm just going to accept him in now if I can. Uh, let me see a view. So welcome Mr. D into the conversation. Hey, welcome. Technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Good morning. How's it going? <laughs> it's going great. How are you today? Doing great. Doing great. Happy to be here. Yeah. Are you, by chance, are you by chance able to flip your screen so we can see you? Uh... Uh, how's that? Is that better? There you go. Sorry. I'm, I'm not very uh, technically literate as far as uh, Instagram postings go. So it's first time live. So maybe some kinks in my feed. But, uh, very happy to be here talking about uh, mushrooms with you today. Yeah, it's fungi day actually too, so it's a perfect day to come on and do this collaboration. Um, how long have you been working with fungi now, and what got you interested? Uh, I've been working with with the specifically cubensis mushrooms for about four years now, a little over four years, and really necessity is kind of what got me interested. I was suffering from depression, a uh, really dark, uh, debilitating depression. Uh, I think it's common in a lot of folks, uh, it's something that came on for me personally in my life around adolescence and just kind of stayed with me uh, for about 20, 25 years and just really dogged me in my life. Uh, it was really a, a disability in, in every sense of the word. And about four years ago, uh, really at my lowest point, my father had just passed away. Uh, I was going through a messy divorce. Uh, I'd lost access to my children. Uh, my grandparents both passed away. And it was just really having a hard time in life, kind of going through, I guess you could call a midlife crisis and really had a kind of a, a breakdown, a nervous breakdown, I guess you could say. And uh, I had the it seems that mushrooms find people that they're kind of at the, at the perfect time. And that was really the case with me. Uh, and they just kind of showed up like a blessing. A friend of mine had uh, kind of, you know, mentioned some, gave me some. And wow, it just really transform my life for the better and so since then i've just kind of been dedicating myself to my free time rather to to perfecting this and, and really growing better medicine and, and 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 more than anything letting others know about the potential of psilocybin to to improve your life yeah really share that out your friend introduced you at the right time and and now you have this you know faith and belief that you'll be introducing it to the right people at the right time as well Certainly, that's my, kind of my driving force is to find the good, the good fit for the medicine. Who needs it? Uh, you know, I'm producing medicine for myself, but, you know, I'm very in tune with the community of who, who needs it out there. And especially during the, the quarantine, there's a lot, of, a lot of mental health challenges in my community. And I think communities, you know, all over the world. And so it's really important, I think, to kind of keep my eyes and ears open for people suffering in my community. Uh, someone with depression, I'm very in tune with what that looks like and how people behave who are depressed. Uh, but it's not just depression. There's all sorts of uh, mental health uh, maladies that can be, that can be helped with, with psilocybin. I mean, it's everything from anxiety. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people have been referred to me this past year that are just so uptight and, and, and just unsure and just anxious uh, and suffering about, you know, COVID, about what's going to happen, about their jobs, about, you know, uh, so that's, that's been a, a big, uh, a big challenge here, I think, in, in our community, folks, they're just really, typically, probably pretty healthy people, mentally healthy speaking, just during the duress of this, of this, of this quarantine, you know, people, like I said, that are normally healthy, and, and, and you know, have got their, their game together, just kind of hitting the wall and breaking down and not able to overcome these you know, once in a lifetime stresses of being in quarantine and are my kids going to say, are my parents going to get sick, et cetera, et cetera. So I've been personally working with a lot of people who've had, you know, really severe anxiety over the past year. Uh, it's also drug addiction. I live on the border with Mexico and it's very common that, 
that young people just cross the border and, and, and access these Mexican pharmacies and get all kinds of, of, of pharmaceutical medications. This is really kind of a scourge. You've got that plus, you know, all sorts of drugs uh, that they're just already present. Uh, alcohol, uh, methamphetamines, cocaine, it's just a scourge. And so I kind of like to see myself as a positive force working against that somewhat. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's just really rewarding to to work with someone and to help them correct their lives, to help them, you know, beat the scourge of a, of a drug addiction with, with, with psilocybin. That may sound counterintuitive. Uh, a lot of people still, unfortunately, think of mushrooms as drugs themselves. So we're taking more drugs to get over a drug addiction, but these are a naturally occurring fungus, and it really has the power to rewire uh the, the circuitry of a, of a drug addict or an alcoholic or a chain smoker or anyone struggling with an addiction uh, it's just really transformative medicine so that's really that's really kind of what i'm about uh, again I, I i had the the the, the good fortune and luck to kind of uh find mushrooms at the, at the at the perfect time but but it's really just like i said to just kind of give that back and and let the community and the world at large know that uh that there's help out there yeah Absolutely, there is. And you make some really good points about mental health, too. You know, there is this collective anxiety, you know, mushrooms allow us to see that there's this collect collective consciousness, you know, we get to tap into that and a little bit more easier when you're using these types of medicines. But what's also there is this collective anxiety, this collective depression, we're feeling from other people, um, you know, this all the fear that that's, you know, really present right now since coronavirus, especially, but you know, this was an ongoing problem even before, you know, mental health was killing more people than coronavirus actually has. But the, the truth is, um, you know, when you're tapping into some of these medicines and this may even be a gift for the medicines because, um, or like an allowance of freedoms, in that, you know, more has been legalized in this time because the medicine medical practitioners and the government is seeing the value in these medicines actually helping people and um, and helping, you know, heal that, that collective um, c fear that's really happening here. You know, the collective yes. suffering that's happening, the collective changes that are happening. And mushrooms are great at helping us adapt. You know, it doesn't matter if it's psilocybin or lion's mane or, you know, some other herbs or even psychedelic medicines, you know, whatever it is that you're called to, you know, as long as you're aligning with nature, you're going to be more adaptable to the changes that are coming our way. You know, I, um, I don't know about you, but because I was using these medicines for so many years, it's like when coronavirus came, there was like a, a moment where I sat there and I was like, wow, I feel like I've prepared my whole life for this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> As well, I felt a little bit more insulated than I normally would have been from just the, the stress and the, just the change, really. I think it, what it all boils down to, actually, is just change. People are afraid of change. You know, we yeah. all kind of get set in these set routines. And again, that's, that's a beautiful thing about you. psilocybin. It has the power to break yeah. you out of those ruts. If you're in kind of a, you know, the same monotone pattern all the time, psilocybin really breaks you out of that. And that's a very positive thing. So uh, I felt, again, blessed. Uh, mushrooms have kind of been my rock. And it brought me stability and, and, and peace in my life. And so I've shuddered to think how the quarantine would have been for me personally without the guiding hand of, of psilocybin to kind of guide me through. Would have been yeah. a lot more challenging for sure. So what are some, you know, major breakthroughs that you've had with this medicine over the last four years? Really just the controlling of the depression. Uh, like I said, from, from adolescence on, I've had just debilitating depression. Uh, it's cost me it's really had a high cost personally in my life. I've lost, you know, uh, employment, relationships, et cetera. Uh, just severe depression to the, to the point where uh, years of my life, I, I had really, really a difficult time functioning as a, as a normal adult. I'm a father. I have two children. And so there's times where I really need to be up and, and, and functioning as a, as a fully functioning member of society. And, and depression really robbed me of that. So as far as breakthroughs, it, the main breakthrough was really living a healthy life. Uh, I think like a lot of people, I've been taking a uh, pharmaceutical medication to, to combat depression, antidepressants. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to name names, but they were all SSRI class medications. 
And I don't know. I know those are effective for some people, but I know that for the majority, over 60 percent of patients on those medications, like myself, no relief at all. In fact, the, the staggering list of side effects was such that it, it made it worse than the original condition. So it's not something that I could really tolerate. Uh, so really, as far as how they transformed my life, they really showed me how to live without depression. They lifted that veil of depression off of me, and I was able to kind of wake up. It was a real awakening. And so to be able to, you know, to get up and have that energy and drive and, and really the, the joy of life came back. And uh, it was kind of like living in black and white. And then all of a sudden, you know, you open your eyes and it's this vivid 4D technicolor vision that you've never had before. And so it's, it's really eye-opening, transformative, transformative. Uh, I've really, the main thing that I've benefited from was just, you know, I think that we, <clears throat> when you're living with depression, you're not, you're not your, your full self. And so psilocybin really kind of gave me that, that zest for life and that ability to kind of get out there and function as a, as a functioning member of society. That, uh, that was huge for me. Uh, but I've seen it transform others as well. Uh, I had a, a, a close friend that was battling a drug addiction uh, and really took him down. Uh, he kind of lost everything was rock bottom, so they speak and uh, was able to, was, was really rewarding and, and heartwarming and, and, and really a beautiful thing for me personally to see, how this medicine transformed his life. Uh, you know, I, we sent him to rehab. Uh, we kind of had a, an intervention and, you know, some family members and friends got together and urged him to go to a rehab facility, which he did. But when he came out, he was still horribly addicted to, to methamphetamines. Yeah. And uh, I brought him to my house and to my home and was able to just give him all the mushroom medicine that he needed. And so he took large trips on a very frequent basis. And so, to be able to see that transformation in him, to see his methamphetamine addiction just slowly go away and to be eliminated and to see him come back to his own self. So, again, it, it, it's really transformative medicine. It's not just depression. There's all sorts of, uh, of, of mental health illnesses or, or disorders that, that this can help and transform. Yeah, I'm totally with you there. And, you know, in my practice, you know, helping people with mental health, too, and like through the psychedelic integration process. So for anybody who doesn't know, um, you know, Mr. D, he's a great cultivator and, you know, very experienced and, you know, just discussing these like topics through his own personal experience, whereas you know, I personally, I help with the integration process afterwards. After you've already worked with the psychedelic medicines, I help you integrate in those messages and really sustain the health and happiness that you receive when you're in those states, when you're, you know, feeling that euphoria. I help you sustain that in your own life and, you know, continue with those messages. And a lot of the time I'm working with people who are uh, either just getting off of SSRIs or who are scared to go back on because they're kind of like relapsing in a sense of the the term. And also like same with addiction. I've got to say, you know, if you want the sustainable results, this is where you've got to go to the fungi, you know, yes. go back to mama nature. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, mushrooms can heal you. It's just uh, the faith that, uh, you know, that it, that it is real medicine and, and it's just patience and time. It's not a magic it's not a magic pill. It's not going to cure everything overnight. So to your question is huge. When you have these ex oh, you know, I think deep experiences, that. these transformative trips, a lot of times you see and, and, and experience fantastic and sometimes bizarre and, and unnerving or, or unexplainable things. And so it's very, very important to, as you said, integrate that, bring it back around and, and, Bring something meaningful out of that. Learn something from that experience. What, what psilocybin does is changes our consciousness. Or as I'm talking to you right now, actually, this, this is one waking level of consciousness. But there's hundreds, thousands of other planes of consciousness out there. And psilocybin allows us to kind of open the door to our subconscious mind and access some of those planes of consciousness. Uh as I said, some of those planes of consciousness are nonlinear and are, can really be sometimes frightening or off-putting or just confusing. And so it's really, really critical the help of a, of a therapist. I work with a therapist myself, 
And I have to say that that in combination with the psilocybin has just been transformative for me personally. And that's, I just can't say so. So thank you so much for mentioning the integration. That's just such a, a huge, huge part of it. It's, it's, there's a lot more to just grabbing a fistful of mushrooms, choking them down, and then, you know, hoping for the best. Uh, there's a lot more that goes to it. And, and really, as you say, it's just tying that back around. How can I, how can I use this change in consciousness that I experimented uh, to benefit and, and improve my life? So to me, integration is a lot like taking notes and, and really studying and then doing well on the, on the, on the, on the exam. You, know, <laughs> you got to take the test after the, uh, yeah. after the classes, the, the trip itself is just a class. You got to take a test and that's, that's the integration afterwards. Yeah. And life will test you like 24 to 48 hours after you think you've got it together. Bam. There's Mike Tyson punching you in the face. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just an exercise of getting back up, getting back up, getting back up. And, 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 yeah. and but, but really I think, for me personally, mushrooms, just to kind of simplify it all, what, what they've meant for me, how they've been, it, it's just really been a loving force that's come in and kind of patted me on the back, gave me a hug when I needed it, and held my hand and just kind of guided me through a really, really rough patch in life. And uh, I, I, it just really gives me a lot of passion and, and excitement to, to kind of preach that message to others, that it can really transform lives. So if you're having a hard time out there, if you're struggling with depression, anxiety, drug addiction, cluster headaches, there's a better way. You know, look yeah, around you and either. reach out. That this yeah. is a very dynamic, large, and growing community of cultivators out there. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. actually, I've kind of had to hide my identity for for legal reasons with you. But hopefully, in the near future, we won't have to do this anymore. And we can, I can get on a soapbox in public with my bullhorn and, and really preach that message about psilocybin. But you know, it's coming. It's, it's happening. Yeah. Someday. I live in Texas, which is a very conservative state. But even here, we've had our former governor, uh, a man named Rick Perry. He's out cheerleading for a, for a bill for research for psilocybin for, for veterans. So even in a very conservative state like Texas, we're starting to see that change in attitudes. And it, it can't it can't happen soon enough, in my opinion. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, I uh, I actually have some American veterans that are clients of mine, and uh, and Canadian veterans too. And you know, they're seeing great effects using these as well. And you know, but it takes more work, as you said. It's no magic pill. Um, you know, you can work with the psilocybin, but you still have to do that integration work. And you're a parent, so you'll totally get it. You know, I always. Um, think about a psychedelic experience as if you're finding out that you're pregnant. You get this calling. You like it's like now you got to do this medicine. Uh, so now you have the preparation work. That nine months, you know you're gonna have this baby. Now you get to prepare, and then it's all for this birth, that experience. You know that experience on average, which I think is crazy. An average birth process is about six hours, the same as an average psilocybin experience is four to six hours. I was like, that. That's there's a, a great fact. Yeah, that's, that, you're right. yeah. that's a perfect. I'm gonna borrow that. If that's okay. It's like oh. no, it's like getting birth. Yeah. And, you know, after the birth, though, you, there's like this, the three months or three months to three years of breastfeeding. There's the toddler ages. There's the teenage ages. Right. There's the the parts when they're ha when they're in adulthood, the parts when they start having their own kids or their own experiences, you know, and you get to be that si sage wise version of yourself. You know, there's all these levels of integration, and that's what people forget. It's the same with when you know that you're going to have a baby and you have that birthing part, and then then you realize, oh, wait, I didn't prepare for breastfeeding. Oh, wait, <laughs> I got, like, a whole, like, 18-plus years that I got to care for this kid. Let's go back. You know? <laughs> exactly. Let's go back. Let's use these tools. Let's continue to go through this rebirthing process so that we're prepared for every step. So we're adaptable as we move through the changes that are out of our control, you know? And, and if, if, if you can say that again, 2020 was certainly a year that it was just out of our control. God, it's just, you know, what do you do? And when you can't find easy solutions like that, and you're just hitting your head against the wall. You know, I can't, my, I'm going to lose my job. My company's going to go under. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, those are, those are some real fears and real anxieties, you know? Uh, Again, I think it's just my my calling, if you will, to make enough medicine available for everybody out there that needs it. There's there's a lot of need out there, especially after a, such a hard year like we've had last year. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I remember when coronavirus first hit, I was called to do uh, 10 days of microdosing. And, you know, I didn't, I don't measure, I know, like, that's weird coming from me, but really, I just go with my intuition. So, um, I did like 10 days of microdosing. I can't say what they, what the doses were. It was like just a spoonful of uh, blue honey, whatever I felt like taking that day. Um, and in that, those 10 days, I took life completely into my hands. It was, I wasn't giving my power to the government. I wasn't giving my power to the virus. I wasn't giving my power to the lockdown. What I did was I took my power back. I like encompassed Terrence McKenna. And I was like, you know, what can I do now uh, with this new information? And I went and I just so happened um, that somebody who had like a property in the country needed somebody to help with permaculture. It was very off grid. And I was like, wow, this is like exact. This is me taking life into my own hands. Now I'm going to go like do this job. And it all happened because of those 10 days of microdosing. I don't know if I didn't go through that process of feeling the fear uh, coming, solution solving, um, you know, making mistakes, asking questions. If I wasn't doing that work, I wouldn't have ended up in that awesome kick-ass opportunity that I had in that time just by taking my power back in a way, liberating myself using the new information, adapting to the changes that were happening and figuring out how I could use that to my benefit. The, the, yeah. the, that's the key word, the adaptation, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell me some more about, um, you know, how it is that you're helping people now, you know, like walk me through what that process is. Well, looks. typically what that, what that looks like, it's a very grassroots, I don't know if you want to call it a movement or, 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 or what, but, but it's very grassroots. It's people I've worked with before and, and it's, it's their friends, their family members, their neighbors, people that they know, hey. I know this person, they, they provided me with some medicine and it transformed and, and improved my life. And so maybe, it, so it's kind of just a, a, an organic grassroots kind of referral based network, if you will. Uh, yeah. But when I, when people come to me, I can see their suffering and they tell me their story. I usually kind of probe them a little bit. I'm not a doctor. I'm certainly not a mental health practitioner. Those are two things that I take very seriously. I'm just a guy who cultivates medicine. That's it. But I've been doing this long enough. I kind of know what what are the you know the the best practices, how to. And so typically, I'll meet with someone and ask them questions: How they're feeling? What's the problem? Are they depressed? Is it anxiety? Have they ever done mushrooms before? Are they currently on any other medications? I like to ask if they have any. You know, mushrooms aren't for everyone. They're wonderful medicine, but there's some people out there that they're not good for. Yeah. If you've had any uh, family history medicine. of psychosis or yeah. or schizophrenia specifically in your family, mushrooms can really be da bad and dangerous for you. So I typically get pro for that a little bit uh, and just make sure it's a person that can take mushrooms. Uh, but after that, you know, it's just really coaching them on how to take them as medicine. It's not always a huge dose. Uh, to your point, microdoses can really, really kind of stabilize someone who's suffering. And a microdose, that's only a, a fraction of a gram. That's a Typically, I make capsules, and those those weigh around uh, 300 milligrams, 300 to 350 milligrams. It's an organic medicine, so it's very hard and to get. It's, it's, like you can that? still have a pretty intense trip off of 300 milligrams, like even off of two, absolutely. In, in, like absolutely. not everybody even needs that amount. No, but, no. Sometimes less is. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. less is definitely more. And, someone who is new to psilocybin or new to mushrooms, the last thing I want to do is scare them. If yeah. I tell them, hey, you need to take five dried grams of total darkness, that's not always going to work. That's going to scare the heck out of a lot of people. That's going to be a very overwhelming and sometimes frightening experience. And for someone who could really benefit from mushrooms, that's not the solution. You're going to scare them away, and they're going to, oh, my God, that was, that was a nightmare. That was terrifying. Never again. That's the last thing I want to do. So I, I typically coach them to start slow, yeah, baby steps, and work up to that heroic dose if that's where they feel that they're they're being called to. Uh, and if they do, then I'll kind of coach them on what the heroic dose looks like. You know, make sure you have a trip sitter, make sure someone's there with you, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the integration on a larger dose is certainly more more uh, pressing uh, because you know the further you go, the 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 further you fall. You know, the the potential is there. 
Yeah. But when I work with people and I, and I sincerely benefit and they, they, you know, they send me this message like, wow, I can't thank you enough. And this has been transformative. I feel so much better and I can really see them benefiting. Then we usually kind of take the next step and, and I go from kind of the, the person who provides mushrooms to them to being the, the, the mushroom grow guide, cultivator, teacher, yes. what have you. So typically I'll kind of hold them by the hand and kind of explain the process, how it works and, and help them to kind of take ownership of that. It's a very simple, natural science mythology. And I'll tell you this, actually, I've never had a single person that just said, I, you know, I can't do this. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, it, everybody can make this happen. It's not, it's not that hard. If I can do it, I feel that, you know, pretty much anybody could. But that's really what it, what it boils down to. I work with them. And when we kind of d determine that mushrooms just are, really have a place in their therapy or their recovery long term, then I'll teach them how to grow so that they're not depending on me for their own medicine, just make them independent. And what I found is those people kind of become points of light in their own community. Uh, they kind of become healers in and of themselves, just kind of the way that I am, I've, I've become. And so it's really a beautiful thing just to kind of see this network of, of like I say, of people and, 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 and growers and, and people who have understood this medicine and how to use it to benefit their lives. We need more people like that. So that's really my passion is to take people who are suffering and, and turn them into growers. Oh, I love that. And what's your favorite part about growing? The harvest. <laughs> it's, it's always the most rewarding. When you open that bin and it's just wall-to-wall -wall mushrooms inside, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, back to your birth analogy, it's like having a bunch of new little kids. Yeah, it is. Do you know what, like, my favorite part, it comes back to that birth analogy, too, is that when the, the raw, fresh mushrooms, um, the stem of it actually looks like an umbilical cord. Like yes. the colors, the twistiness. I was like, that is like the umbilical cord to the collective consciousness. I'm like, this is the connection. This is like yeah. mom and nature's nutrition. Like, you know, we're getting it right from her. So. <laughs> I love how you were talking about the ripple effect too, you know, that not only are you just like helping people, you know, source, but you're helping people learn to fish too, essentially. You're teaching them how to do it for themselves. And I think that's so important. And I see that with so many, you know, people who are in this space now, because I'm talking to people every single day in this space and people who want to like, you know, are ready to make it a business to like create their own ripple effect. And yeah, I think that that's like the most beautiful part is just that unfolding. And I do it in my own business too. Like as soon as I start like figuring out a new protocol, something that's going to help people, you know, it's like I'll do it one-on-one, -on -one, make sure that it's right, make sure that it works. And then it's like, can I replicate this on a group setting? And if, if yes, then it's like now I can make a book. And I did that for my first book, um, which was like, which was Be the Change. So that was all... Uh, integration through using the seasons and the moon cycles. And now I'm doing this new psychedelic uh, research one where I'm doing the same thing, turning it from like one-on-one uh, -on -one into group coaching and then going to ripple out into a book. And this is with the 28-day uh, uh, protocol. So again, it's like just really, really simple and something that can be replicated and people can do on their own later on. You know, it's Absolutely. great to have it's great to have like community like us, like, you know, we do referrals back and forth, you know, we're a tight community and we're sharing our community. Um, but it's so nice too, that as uh, like, as everybody else is like starting to get this and learn how to fish on their own, they're then able or, and like liberated enough and confident enough in their ability to share that. And this so. community is, is exploding. In the four years that I've been a yeah. member of this community, it, it has really, really, really grown. And the internet is just such a powerful tool. Uh, it really makes my job as a teacher so much easier because the heavy lifting of, uh, quote unquote, of, of giving these lessons, a lot of the other good, great, kind members of our community have already done that heavy lifting. They've already made those tutorial videos. So as, as a coach, I've just got to point and click, hey, this is a good video. It, it seems fundamentally sound. I'm going to share you watch this video. And so all I'm doing really is sharing links of, yeah. of how to tutorial videos that already exist online. So, like I said, it's made my job as a teacher teaching someone how to how to grow their own medicine. It's made it very simple. Yeah. Like, watch this video. Watch this video, and I'll kind of hey, kind of go through it. This is kind of my my advice. This is the first step, second step, etc. Uh, very simple, and like I said, it's it's very it's not it's not hard. I've never had anyone that's just kind of thrown up with their hands and said I can't do this. It didn't work. No, it's 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 not hard.
And like I said, this community has grown so much. There's so many great members of this community who have given back, who have made the whole process easier and streamlined, be it uh, from providing spores to creating, uh, you know, the different component parts of growing mushrooms, be it substrate or grain spawn or, you know, folks that produce uh, Petri dishes, all the different component parts. A lot of these are, are again, parts that have been farmed out by other members of the community. So whatever your skill level, there's a lot more resources now to cultivate at home on your own than there were maybe five or 10 years ago. Yeah, it's so true. And I love that too, like how accessible information is. If you're using technology as a tool and you're seeing it as a tool, literally the world is at your fingertips. But, yes. you know, if you're, you know, doing it like with drifter mindset, drifter mentality, just getting stuck in somebody else's plan, you know, scrolling to like empty your mind, it's like, you know, then you're being controlled. That's the same as an addiction. You know, are you going to use it as a superpower or, I mean, even a diagnosis like depression or anxiety? It's like, we, that's part of the human condition is suffering. It's like, are you yes. going to use that as a superpower or are you going to give away your power? to it exactly. you know it always comes down to that decision you know similar to you you know like all that resources are out there even with integration too it's all there so often i'm like just you know customizing what audiobooks i'm going to give out to somebody or like um you know what meditation i'm going to do with them or like you know what activities i'm going to do with them you know that part changes but you know at the same time it's like it's all stuff that's already there i just personalize it to them yes. just you what it's like what's your situation you know where is it that you're living what how much space do you have how are you going to do this and you just personalize the resources for them so it's great to have a coach and have the community because it takes away a lot of the work you're already working with somebody who's made the mistakes that can give you direct experience but at the like at the same time you know if this is something you just really want to like go out you can do it on your own like, you know, if yes. you have the time to, like, get messy and make all the mistakes and that's the way you really want to do it. And really, you can do it anywhere. I, I speak Spanish. I live on the border with Mexico. And so I, I coach a lot of people in, in Mexico, Central and South America, Latin America. And uh, in certain countries, they don't have certain – they don't have all the same equipment that we have in the U.S. or in Canada, i.e. pressure cookers or – or petri dishes, or a lot of times there's certain component parts of the process that are not as readily available, but adaptation, it's possible anywhere. So it's really fascinating for me to see how this works in other countries and how folks in, in, you know, in South America, how they grow, we can learn from their techniques. And I think from platforms like Instagram, that's really improved my skill as a cultivator, just seeing all these different techniques, nuances, and different varieties that people are developing. It's just really fascinating, fascinating stuff to just kind of peek behind the curtain at some of the other advanced mycologists in the community and kind of see the innovating, fascinating stuff that they're doing. It's, it's just really dynamic and changing. It's really, uh, it's really fun to kind of keep up with that. Have you ever done any, like, outdoor cultivation? I know it's illegal. Sure. And you, but you do? You try to? Yeah, I live, in the, I live in an area where convinces mushrooms naturally occur. And so uh, it's, it's quite simple to grow out, outdoors. It's a couple yeah. of different ways. Uh, <clears throat> if you have access to cattle, if you know where there's cows, uh, you can add spores to the water uh, that, the, that the cattle drink. And that's a great way to seed a, a field or a pasture, wherever those cows are grazing. They're going, those spores are going to live through their digestive tract. A cow or a bovine animal has four stomachs, but they don't really digest food the way that we do. It's just kind of grass. It does, you know, it doesn't, it's not getting that hard digest. So those spores can go through a cow's digestive tract and come out through their excrement, which is the perfect natural substrate for that's where cubensis mushrooms naturally occurs in cow poop. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. Kind of a, I guess a, a slower way, but a more direct way to do it is to take grain spawn of uh, like, you know, grains that have been uh, colonized with with cubensis mushrooms. This can be put in a uh, in a planter, if you will. Uh, we use uh, cow dung, compost, and straw, and it depends on the time of year. You just gotta time it. Temperature is key. Uh, where I live, it's really hot in the summer, too hot for mushrooms to grow. So it's something seasonal that I do. It's got to be done in the spring or in the fall when the temperatures are, are adequate enough to, so they don't burn off or, or freeze. But very simple. Uh, you just kind of set it up and, uh, you know, 
grow when we grow indoors, we're all you'll hear cultivators talk about contamination. We're scared about contamination. Here I'm sitting in front of my my HEPA filter, my flow hood, and you know we do all these things to prevent contamination because when we're growing in a box inside of our house, we've kind of compressed their environment into a very small hermetically closed box, if you will. And so if there is a contaminant there, it really amplifies that. But in the natural world, you know, you don't have to be so careful about contamination. Just take some clean grain spawn and, and put that into place, and the rest just kind of seems to happen. So, yeah, outdoor cultiva cultivation is great, uh, or just outdoor foraging. Uh, you know, if you know of a place where there's cattle that, that graze, uh, a couple of days after a strong rainstorm, you know, if there's been an inch or two of rain, uh, a couple of days after that, usually a pretty good chance of finding some wild cubensis, which again kind of starts the whole cycle over again, uh, cultivating new varieties, new land race varieties. It's, it's very similar to the cannabis culture. Uh, you know, it's folks that go out to these foreign countries and, and find these new land races of cannabis and develop those. We're doing the same thing in the Cubensis world. So these wild plants are very, it's kind of where you can start to domesticate, quote unquote, a, a new land race variety. So this is very fascinating stuff. Uh, the, the outdoor foraging is, you know, some of those guys in, along the Texas and Gulf Coast and especially in Florida, uh, they're doing great work out there. You know, and, and as well as, you know, Central America, there's a lot of folks down in Costa Rica that are just out there harvesting wild Cubensis plants. And it's, it's just really a great start for a new a new variety this uh it's very similar to cannabis uh 20 years ago there was maybe two or three main varieties of cannabis you know super skunk number one northern lights you know just the main ones now i can't keep up anymore there's been so many hybrids and hybrids and hybrids and crosses with crosses and that's really kind of where 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 fungus is getting right now all these different varieties of cubensis have been crossed and crossed and you have hybrids crossed with other hybrids so we're getting all these beautiful new fascinating varieties coming out and it's just like i said it's just fascinating a vehicle like uh like instagram to be able to share and network those those genetic varieties with others is just that's what it's all about no um one cool thing too about like where you are talking about the foraging i remember hearing uh i think it's kathleen harris is trans mechanist partner and she uh, she likes going and doing the foraging, uh, and also like a Selvia, she does Selvia divinorum, but it's all in Mexico. She's got like a tribe there that she's really connected with. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently when, uh, after a lightning storm, that's when the psilocybin pops up there. And I thought that that was so interesting that they were saying that it was like the energy in the ground like helps them, like sparks them to pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've noticed like when I was growing on inside doing my own cultivation similar to you that it was more aligned with the moon cycle. It was like every two weeks on the new or full moon I was getting like a harvest every two weeks which was like crazy. After I did the original um, like one month waiting period I, I would say but yeah have you noticed anything like that in foraging and like home cultivation like synchronicities that align with mom and nature like that? Mm, I don't know if I could take, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm, I'm really not, I'm kind of a, I'm not very astute sometimes. Uh, sometimes I can't see the forest through the trees, so to speak. So it's not that it doesn't have, I'm just not as in tune with, with that kind of thing, I don't think. But for me personally, on my cultivation, it's very, it's very, uh, what should I say? It's, it's very routine. Uh, I've got things kind of rotating on a, on a, very periodic basis. So typically in my world, I am harvesting every three to four weeks and it, it's very cyclical. It's just very repetitive and cyclical like that. Uh, but I wouldn't, I don't, not to say that it doesn't align with, with the lunar cycles or, or whatnot. I'm just, I'm not the smartest tool in the, in the drawer. So it speaks. it's probably over my head. <laughs> well, that's okay. It was just out of curiosity because, you know, things like change from different people. Like it could have just been my energy that allowed it to sync with the moon cycles because that was my intention, you know, and same with Kathleen Harris or like, you know, it could have just been like an idea, you know, somebody said like one time, oh, it's because of like, you know, the lightning striking and then enough people like really believed it or saw that, that it like really expanded like i don't know that is just like what i heard and what i've experienced i was just curious if anything like that has ever 
you know, came to you in that way or showed up for you. It's and interesting. Maybe it I'll, I'll make a point to kind of be more attuned to that. Like I said, it's probably something that 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 is something that can be you know observed and and, and witnessed. I'm just not very astute sometimes. Hey, well. Uh, we're coming about like the end of our call today. I'm just curious. Is there anything else that you wanted to say or like bring to the conversation today? Anything any last words for everybody or Yes, I would just like to remind everybody out there that uh, that psilocybin medicine is a, is a is a is a viable option for a lot of illness out there uh, I think we all know someone in our communities be it a family member a friend neighbor a loved one co-worker That may not seem the same as they normally do you know, and they may not be as talkative or they may just kind of look down or they may, whatever the case may be. And uh, again, I know we've, we've been you know, mentioning it a lot, but after such a hard year and, and so much loss and, and pain, let's all just take a moment and look around our communities and, and think of all of our friends and, and family members and loved ones. And, and if you know someone that's suffering, maybe reach out to them, see how they're doing. Hey, how's it going? You feeling okay? Uh, and if not, if they're telling you that they feel in a certain way that can be improved, just keep mushrooms in mind and maybe refer them to, to someone like myself or Ashley who have the experience in working with mushroom medicine. We're here to help. That's, that's what I'm here for. Uh, I, I want to help others improve their life with mushrooms the way that mushrooms have improved my life. And I feel that I, in some small way, owe that to mushrooms. And so, like I said, that's all I'm about is just making sure that uh, people that need this medicine have access to it and know about it. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, you know, I couldn't agree more. Uh, just share the message. You know, you're, you're all here and showing up because, you know, you feel a calling to do this type of work in yourself or to ripple it out in another area. So just, you know, stay the course. Have some patience with yourself. Um, and, you know, share share love to everybody else around. Because yeah, you need more, know, much, more of that. much more of that is needed. Yeah, absolutely. Judgment Thank you so much for having me today. I really, <laughs> really appreciate the opportunity to come on here with you today and talk about mushrooms. I really, that's, that's great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it was my pleasure. You know, I love talking with you anytime. <laughs> wonderful. Hey, stay blessed. Have a great, wonderful day. And uh, let's, let's, let's spread the love. Yeah, let's spread the love. That's a great ending. <laughs> Bye, Dr. D or Take Mr. Care. Bye -bye. Bye. Blessings.